Hi, I'm Ned, and I make games. Today I want to show you how to create a render feature in Unity's Universal Render Pipeline. A render feature allows you to add custom passes to the renderer, enabling all sorts of cool stuff. To illustrate, I'll create a simple desaturation post-processing effect. This is just part one in a series of videos about renderer features, so buckle up! I made this using Unity 2020.1.5 F1 and Universal Render Pipeline 8.2.0. To get started, set up your project to use the Universal Render Pipeline. You'll want to download the package, create a settings asset, and assign it as your project's pipeline. While you're at it, set up a test scene. A render feature starts life as a C-sharp script. Unity provides a script template under the Create Rendering menu. Create one and name it Simple Desaturate Feature. Open that file in your script editor. Here's the finished Simple Desaturate Feature script. You can grab this file from a link in the description. I'll walk you through how it works. There are two main parts to a render feature. The Scriptable Render Feature class and the Scriptable Render Pass class. The pass does the heavy lifting, executing the effect, while the feature class sets up the pass and queues it to run. Let's start with the feature class. First, create an instance variable to hold the pass instance. Unity calls this create function when the game first loads. Use it to create the renderer pass instance. In this case, we also create the material for the desaturate effect. Don't worry, we'll graph the shader later. The render pass event controls when a render pass will execute. We want the desaturate effect to run after everything else, so set the event as after post processing. Next up is the add render passes function. Unity calls this every frame, and the feature uses it to ready the pass to run. First, we need to tell the pass which texture to read from. We'll use the camera's render target, or color texture. Next, enqueue the pass which tells the renderer to render our custom pass this frame. Okay, now let's look at the render pass class. First, we have a few instance variables to hold the material, render source, and a temporary render target. Take a closer look at render target identifier and render target handle classes. These both describe a render target, which is a texture to save a render to. The difference is, in simple terms, a render target identifier points to a texture directly, while a render target handle points to a texture variable in the shader, which can then be filled with an actual texture. So, a shader cannot write to a render target handle until it has been given a texture, but a render target identifier is ready to go by definition. Moving on, use the constructor to set up these variables. Here, the init function ties the temp texture handle to the shader variable underscore temp desaturate texture. The set source function is pretty self-explanatory. The pass receives and saves a texture to read from later. Unity calls the execute function when it's ready to render our effect. Here we should queue render commands for Unity to send to the GPU. First, get a command buffer, which stores our commands. The string argument is a debug name, displayed when debugging and profiling the renderer. One restriction of render targets is you cannot read and write to the same texture at once. We run into this problem since we want to both read from and write to the camera's render target. To get around this, let's use a temporary texture handle defined earlier. We want the texture to have the same format as the camera texture, but with no depth buffer. This texture descriptor describes those requirements. Here we create a render target, assigning it to temp texture handle. The temp texture handle now contains a texture that we can render to. We'll need to use blit commands to finally run the shader. The blit method enqueues commands in the command buffer to copy the texture source into the texture destination. Optionally, it also can apply a shader material in the process. We want to run the desaturate shader on the source texture and save it in the temp texture. Once that's done, transfer the temp texture back to the source texture. These two blit commands set that up. A quick note on the zero pass to the first blit command. 
that is the shader pass to run. I'll go more into this in a later video, but for now, be sure to pass 0 for any shader made in the shader graph. Finally, these last two lines let Unity know the command buffer has been filled and that it can be recycled. There's one more function, frame cleanup, which Unity calls when it's finished rendering. Use it to release the temporary texture, freeing up the memory it used. Okay, so that's the render texture. On to the desaturate shader. Create an unlit shader graph called desaturate. The main idea here is to convert the screen color from red, green, blue to hue saturation value. To desaturate, we can set the saturation value to zero and then convert back to red, green, blue. That's what these nodes do. I actually multiply the saturation by a saturation property, giving a bit more control over the final look. Getting the screen color is not too difficult. Remember the blit function in the render pass class? It saves the source texture as a shader variable called underscore main text. To access that in a graph, create a texture 2D property and under the reference field, enter underscore main text. Now that property will hold the texture set by the blit command. Then it's as simple as sampling the main texture property and feeding the color into the color space conversion. Make sure at the other end of your node chain, the color field of the unlit master is hooked up. Then save your asset. There's one last step. To enable a render feature, find your render settings asset. It is automatically created when you create your universal render pipeline settings asset. In the inspector, click the button, add renderer feature. Click simple desaturate feature and you're good to go. Thanks for watching. In part two, I'll take the desaturate feature and power it up, allowing you to apply any shader of your choosing to the screen. If this tutorial was helpful, please leave a like. It tells YouTube to recommend this tutorial to others and really helps the channel. Are there any effects you're planning to use in your project? Is there any topic you'd like to see me make a video about? Thanks again for watching and make games.